Hi and welcome. My name is Pat Gage and in this short video I'm going to explain the steps needed for the planning process of your project. And again you can view this and other videos I'm going to create at the website you see down below there on my YouTube channel. Okay, let's get started. Alright, so there's 10 steps uh, to any project planning process. And again, there can be 11 or 12, but basically there's 10 steps that we're going to cover in this short video. I'm going to go over each one of them, starting with the first one, and that is create the project plan. And now this has subtasks underneath of it, but in general, it's, you know, in that area there, you're creating the project plan. You're creating the, define the work breakdown schedule. You're identifying the required resources you're going to need to be able to complete this project. You're going to get, you know, construct uh, you know, a project schedule you know, in, in a Gantt chart in MS Project or Monday or JIRA, whatever system or tool you use to create that. You're also going to create the list of assumptions and also a list of constraints that you may have on this project. All right, and then you get into the next phase, or I should say the next step, and that one is being create a resource plan, right? What are the resources you're going to need on this project? Are they going to be digital? Are they going to be strategy? Are they going to be, you know, what are they going to be? Are they going to be front end developers, back end developers, UX, UI? List them all out. You know, what, what kind of equipment, if any, are you going to use? Are you going to purchase software? You have to purchase a seed in a software package. You know, all this kind of stuff, time frames, quantity. If you don't have a dedicated team, what how much quantity i come from an area an agency where we're, we're dealing in time frames with people right you can have you can have you know uh, robert for you know 20 hours a week okay great we pencil them in that's what you're doing there in the resource plan and once you get that set up and finalized you move into the next phase which is you create the, the financial plan right how much are these resources going to cost you know and sometimes Project managers may not get involved in that. Uh, I've been involved in both sides, knowing the cost rates and the labor cost rates and getting that detail and just knowing that, okay, here, use these people because they fit that range. Either way, you create the financial plan. You know, uh, are you gonna have to rent equipment? Are you gonna have to lease equipment? Are you gonna have to have materials that you're gonna don't have that you're gonna have to build a client? That is in the create the financial plan. And you can, you know, define the financial process, right? How are we going to do, how are we going to pay for this? Is it going to be passed through to the client? Is this going to be going through our invoicing and the such? So the next step we get into then is to create the quality plan, right? We, we got to talk about defining the quality targets, you know, and, and this is where, again, all these you would do and talking with your st stakeholders, your sponsors, uh, people who are involved in the project. This one here is really keyed in on the stakeholders and the sponsors. You know, what is the quality plan? Yes, your agency, your company has those quality uh, plans in place, but now what is it what the, the, the client and the stakeholders are looking for? What is their definition of quality? What's the quality targets they're looking for us to hit? We have to know that first right before we can be successful and then you also define the quality process right what's what's the process in getting this through the quality thing if you didn't find out uh, until later in the process that one stakeholder is only available on Tuesdays you know of a window of uh, three hours and you have to have him signed off and he's unavailable during the whole month of July and that's when you want to get sign off there may be a problem right so you, you move into there with the quality plan, then you get into the risk plan, and that's number five here. Risk, and this is where, again, you engage everybody on the team, you invite you know, all, all the people on your team, probably management in your, in your company and the such, talk to people who have dealt with similar projects in the past, uh, bring everybody in and identify the risks. You know, also talk to your shareholders, your stakeholders, and your and your sponsors, uh, and people in there in, on the project that are you know the, let's say the strategy department who've dealt with projects like this before, and a lot of lessons learned, right? So you identify the risks, you prioritize the risks, you know, and then you also create a risk schedule. You know, at what point in this project is the risk the greatest? 
typically it's during the project execution, but it could be during the project, you know, when we're rolling it over and moving it from pre-production into production uh, servers. You know, it could be when we go live um, and it just depends, but you need to know that. So then you have a uh, risk identified. You also have to have a risk management process, right? We know because right now, let's say you're planning this project and this project could be six months in length or five months, whatever. You're going to forget what you talked about three months ago. So write everything down, write the plan down of, okay, when this happens, when we move from the QA server into pre-production server, the risk is ding, ding, ding. And what, how do we handle that? Oh, okay. We need to get in contact with the services department and tell them to put it on server, whatever, whatever. Again, get as detailed as you can. I'm just giving you basic examples, but that's what you do over there. Now, the next thing you do is create the accept, uh, acceptance plan, right? And again, talking with your stakeholders, talking with your sponsors, your team members, a lot of this, this creating acceptance plan, risk plan, and the quality plan are done with the stakeholders, the sponsors of the project, because you want to list the acceptance criteria. You know, what may be acceptable to the project team, right, in the past or past projects may not be what the stakeholder is looking for. They may be looking for totally different. You want to identify that up front before you get down to that point and that either cannot be achieved or it's going to take more time, more budget to achieve it. Find it out up front and get that. So you create the acceptance schedule, right? At what point during the, the project and the plan are we going to you know, put this into the stakeholders to get uh, approval? How quickly can we get it back from them? What is their approval? You also want to define the approval uh, acceptance process. What do they have to do? Just to email back saying, yep, I agree. Or is it a formal you know, template you send them and saying, here's where you know, we're doing this on this date and this time, please sign here. Is it something like, that? and again, get that all de defined now, because I can tell you from experience when you're in the middle of things, they're gonna forget, you're gonna forget, Basically, mostly they're going to forget, right? Oh, I didn't say that. I didn't know. No, we needed it in this DPI. Oh, we needed it in this printer size. Okay, nobody said anything. If you don't have any notes to go back to, you're pretty much, you know, kind of at their mercy. Next thing you do is create the communications plan. And this kind of dovetails into the acceptance plan. You know, the communication objectives, the guidelines, your target audiences, meaning that you're going to communicate with your stakeholders and it also in here you would do a stakeholder, uh, you know, uh, figuring out what the stakeholders' influences in the project, right? So if a, you have a, a lot of stakeholders and a lot of them are in the, you know, very little influence and very low uh, management authority, you're gonna you're gonna approach them differently or give them different information than you would somebody in the the upper right corner of the, of the stakeholder analysis that has high influence and high uh, power uh, okay over the project you're going to communicate with those two people a little bit differently but you want to know that right now you want to do that you know you uh, what is what is the communication how are we going to do it what are the messages are you going to do weekly updates are monthly updates to people who are you know on the team but they don't need to be updated on a weekly basis that's all stuff that you need to, uh, to get written down and also you during this year you also do the communications matrix right how are we going to talk to these people is it a phone call is it a status report every week is it on their template our template get all these things hammered out because these are all pinch points that can get you you know, hurt or not hurt, but you know, in trouble in a project when you can't say back, well, wait a minute, didn't you remember we talked about this already? Oh yeah, you're right, we did, sorry about that. And then we roll through, okay? Now the next couple ones here, now you may not have, you may not have to do a procurement, uh, you know, plan. You may not be purchasing outside resources. I know I've had some projects with some healthcare providers where I've had to go out and get printers, you know, outside printers and specific printers that were union shops, you know, printers that did this type of business. So we had to go procure that. Now, even though that was a pass through to the client, we still had to procure that and be that conduit between that. And so you may be able, 
have this or you may not. You may out use outside vendors. You may have to go purchase, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, seats in a software package. You know, how is that done? Is that just going online and using corporate credit card? Identify all those requirements. And the next one is, you know, contact suppliers again if you're using the procurement process. If you're not, please disregard. But, but. Again, I've had projects where I had to go out and procure the services of other companies. I needed to say, okay, what is my company's procurement process, right? How long is that? You know, I can't just, you know, like I'm at home, whip out my, you know, Amex card and type it in and charge it to the project like I would or at home ordering books, you know, find that process out. Is there an approval process in your own company? What's the, you know, wait time, lead times? Same thing like that. And then you, you go through the RFP uh, if it has to, if that's a company policy or if that is a policy of your stakeholder or your client. Then again, all this together, folks, makes a plan that you can say, okay, here's the length of time we need to do this project the correct way. Now, what this is, is this comes and goes through the stakeholders and clients and they say, oh my gosh, inevitably they're gonna say, oh my gosh, no, this is way out. Okay, well then what can you do to shorten your acceptance you know, area? Can you shorten your acceptance down to a day or 24 hours or whatever? Um, and then that's what you do. What you do again, phase or step 10, is perform a phase review, right? Identify the phase review criteria. How are you gonna see if this phase is complete? Has it been done accurately? And again, you're gonna be talking to the stakeholders, your sponsors, your team, and getting buy-in mostly from your stakeholders and your sponsor of the project, as well as your management and your company. So putting this all together, you come up with a pretty, you know, pretty inclusive list of things and, and also also a plan that you can then ex ex execute on, excuse me, execute on and be successful with your project. Well, I hope this was of value to you. I hope that you enjoyed uh, at least a little bit of this. Uh, please look for more videos. And again, I'm Pat Gage. Thank you very much. And see this video and more at my website, or I should say at my YouTube channel on the screen right there. And again, thank you very much and have a great day.